Welcome everybody to the February Sew Along. This month we will be sewing the stunning folk art rabbit table runner. In this video we will show you an example of how to create one of the blocks. This will be block 3 as well as the full construction of the table runner. Please refer back to our full photographed instructions on how to complete the remainder of the blocks. Before we begin the stitching process, upload the design onto your machine as well as hooping up your desired hoop size. Now there are four different sizes for this design. They are the 4x4, 5x5, 6x6 and the 7x7. We made our table runner using the 6x6 blocks. Let's begin by placing batting 1 on top of your hoop and centre as best as you can. Stitch down. Once stitched down, remove your hoop from the machine and use your applique scissors to trim away the excess batting. Be careful not to cut into any of the stitching. Return your hoop back to your machine and stitch the placement line for the first half of the background. Place fabric A right side up on top of your hoop and completely cover the placement line. Stitch down. Using your applique scissors, trim away the fabric along the angled edge. Do not trim any of the excess fabric in the seams. Now place fabric B wrong side up on top of the hoop with one of the long edges crossing the angled stitch down edge of fabric A by about half an inch. Stitch down. Use your applique scissors to trim away the excess fabric from the angled edge. Fold fabric B over and pull it against the stitching. Stitch down. Stitch the placement line for the rabbit. Place fabric B right side up on top of the hoop, completely covering the placement line and stitch down. Use your applique scissors to trim the excess fabric around the shape of the rabbit. Embroider the satin stitch around the rabbit. We will now begin the process of stitching the floral embroidery. Please refer back to the instructions to follow the steps. Once you have completed all of the embroidery, remove your block from the hoop. Using a rotary cutter and ruler, trim back the edges of the block to half an inch. Now that you have finished your first block, please refer back to the instructions to see how the remainder of the blocks are made. To assemble your table runner, firstly decide on the layout. Place the first two blocks from the first row right sides together. Match up one of the side edges and then pin together. Take your two joined blocks over to your sewing machine. You will see that on the back of the blocks there will be two lines around the perimeter of these blocks. These lines are created from the stitch down of batting 1 and fabric A. 
stitched directly in between these two lines. It will work out to be about half an inch. Once stitched together, take these two blocks over to your ironing board and iron open the seam on the back of the blocks. Repeat the same pinning, stitching and ironing process for the remaining rows. Now that you have all of your blocks in each row joined together, it is now time to join each row together. Begin by placing the first two rows right sides together and pinning along the long edge. Stitch together using your sewing machine and iron the seam open. Continue this same pinning, stitching and ironing process for each time you join a row. As you can see, when we are stitching blocks together, we like to pin at one end and then lift up the blocks and match the satin stitches and seams as we go. We find that this is the most accurate way, but please feel free to pin and stitch the way you feel most comfortable with. Once all of the rows have been joined together, you will notice that there is excess fabric from the triangle blocks that aren't flush with the straight edges of the table runner. Simply just trim these away with your rotary cutter. And then at the same time, trim away any fraying threads from the edges of the runner. Now to attach the backing fabric. Place fabric E right side up on top of your work surface and then place the front of the runner wrong side up on top. Pin together. When pinning the two together, pin right around the perimeter of the runner but make sure you leave a gap of about 5 to 7 inches wide on any of the edges. We positioned our gap on one of the angled edges of one of the triangle blocks. Move the runner with the attached backing over to the sewing machine. Stitch the two together using a half inch seam, remembering to leave the gap. Now that the backing has been stitched to the front of the runner, remove all of the pins. Using your rotary cutter and ruler, trim the seams back to a quarter of an inch and then trim the seam where the gap is to about half an inch. Also be sure to clip the corners, this will help you achieve perfect corners and points. Turn the whole table runner right sides out through the gap that you left in one of the edges.
using some sort of pointy implement, carefully push out all of the points and corners. Move the runner over to the ironing board and give the table runner a good press with the iron. Remember to take your time so you can achieve a neat finish. Now for this last step you can either use a needle and thread or fabric glue to close up the gap. We opted to use a needle and thread. Well done, you have now finished your stunning folk art rabbit table runner. Thank you all for joining us in this month's sew along. We cannot wait to see what you all create.